Good morning everyone and welcome to Live at 10 today. It's a glorious day out there, the sun is shining and during our prayers we'll be using a picture of the sun shining. Our first hymn today is What a Friend We Have in Jesus. So let us pray. We give thanks to you, Heavenly Father, through Jesus Christ, your dear Son, that you have protected us through the night from all harm and danger. We ask that you would also protect us today from sin and all evil, so that our life and actions may please you. Into your hands we commend ourselves, our bodies, our souls and all that is ours. Let your holy angels be with us, so that wicked foe may have no power over us. Amen. Holy God, holy and mighty, holy and immortal, have mercy on us. Now let's profess our faith in the words of the Creed. I believe in God the Father Almighty, Creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, God's only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day he rose again, he ascended into heaven. He is seated at the right hand of the Father, and he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. O oh Lord, I cry to you for help. In the morning my prayer comes before you. Let my mouth be full of your praise and your glory all the day long. 
Every day will I bless you and praise your name for ever and ever. Awesome things will you show us in your righteousness, O God of our salvation. O hope of all the ends of the earth and of the seas that are far away. Bless the Lord, O my soul, and all that is within me, bless God's holy name. You redeem my life from the grave, and crown me with mercy and steadfast love. Lord, hear my prayer, and let my cry come before you. A reading from the book of Jeremiah, chapter 23. Woe to the shepherds who are destroying and scattering the sheep of my pasture, declares the Lord. Therefore, this is what the Lord, the God of Israel, says to the shepherd who tends my people. Because you have scattered my flock and driven them away and have not bestowed care on them, I will bestow punishment on you for the evil you have done, declares the Lord. I myself will gather the remnant of my flock out of all the countries where I have driven them and will bring them back to their pasture, where they will be fruitful and increase in number. I will place shepherds over them who will tend them and they will no longer be afraid or terrified. Nor will any be missing, declares the Lord. The days are coming, declares the Lord, when I will rise up for David, a righteous branch, a king who will reign wisely and do what is just and right in the land. In his days Judah will be saved and Israel will live in safety. This is the name by which he will be called, the Lord our righteous saviour. Now today's psalm is Psalm 23, that well-known and well-loved psalm. And today we'll sing it to the tune of Crimmond, The Lord's My Shepherd. The Lord's My Shepherd from the Gospel according to Mark, chapter 6. The apostles gathered around Jesus 
and reported to him all they had done and taught. Then, because so many people were coming and going that they did not even have a chance to eat, he said to them, Come with me by yourselves to a quiet place and get some rest. So they went away with it by themselves in a boat to a solitary place. But many who saw them re leaving recognised them and ran on foot from all the towns and got there ahead of them. When Jesus landed and saw a large crowd, he had compassion on them, because they were like sheep without a shepherd. So he began teaching them many things. When they'd crossed over, they landed at Gennesaret and anchored there. As soon as they got out of the boat, pe people recognised Jesus. They ran throughout the whole region and carried sick on mats to wherever they heard he was. And wherever he went, into villages, towns or countryside, they placed the sick in the marketplaces. They begged him to let them touch even the edge of his cloak. And all who touched it were healed. Thanks and praise be to God for his word to us today. Now, you may have seen on the post on Facebook, or you may have had it emailed to you, a picture. A picture of the sun. If you haven't, imagine this. A dark sea with some rocks. A dusky sky with some clouds. But the sun is shining through. And God says, I left the light on for you. Now, that's something we often say to children if they're scared of the dark. But I wonder, does this mean that God's leaving it on as reassurance? Or is it because the sun is the source of all creation and life sustaining? And God as the shepherd looks after us as God created us. So let's pray. God created us all, and the sun is a source of life. God has left the light on so that we can thrive. When a child is scared of the dark, a light is often left on for reassurance. God has left that light on to reassure us. When we feel like there's a cloud hanging over us, we may say that every cloud has a silver lining. God has left the light on so that we can see those silver linings. When going through tough times, we can be encouraged if we focus on the light at the end of the tunnel. God has left the light on so that we always have hope.
When a shepherd takes his sheep through a dark valley, he knows that they will eventually come out into the light again. God has left the light on so that we know that we will come out of darkness into his light. Amen. So let's join all our worries and fears and our hopes and dreams for the future together with the words of the Lord's Prayer. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name, your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Save us from the time of trial and deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power and the glory are yours, now and forever. Amen. So we come to our final hymn, the words of which I thought were very, very appropriate for the thought of God leaving the light on and God being of creation, of power, wisdom, bounty and being. You may not recognise the words, but I'm pretty sure you'll recognise the tune. who leaves that light on for us, the one who recreated us, reassured us, looks after us, leads us through the darkness, be with us, be with those we love, and with those we ought to love, now and always. Amen.